Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and welcome to Out and About on Think Tech Live streaming network series broadcast from our downtown studio at Pioneer Plaza at the core downtown Honolulu. I'm Winston Welch and delighted you're joining us today where every other week we explore a variety of topics, organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. As a disclaimer, any views or opinions expressed by me are strictly my own and not connected with any organization. That said, joining me in the studio today, I am so delighted to have Liz McCara, Director of Emergency Operations and Community Wellness at Waikiki Health. And Liz now oversees the agency's entire emergency operation plan annual testings, and training on a community-based level. Additionally, she's managing the Friendly Neighbors Program, uh, which is a free in-home assistance to seniors in Waikiki, along with managing the Smoking Sensation Program. So today we're gonna continue our discussion about how Waikiki Health uh, has been of service to over 50 years uh, to the community with a lot of vital services and programs that it offers in medical care, preventative care, and social services. So. With that introduction, I would like to welcome you to the show today, Liz. Oh, thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here representing Waikiki Health, Winston. Well, thank you so much. And, you know, we are continuing this conversation from before when we had Phyllis Dendel here, who is uh, a, a, a chair. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, she's a, a board of directors member. Yeah, I believe chair of marketing. Oh, yeah. she's chair of marketing. And what a terrific lady she was. And just like you, a real passionate, dedicated, uh, lovely human being who really wants to give back to the community in, in just who she is. And you're very lucky in this regard that you are able to do that in your, in your work. So tell me about how did you get involved with Waikiki Health and why did you get involved with Waikiki Health? Well, Winston, I've been with Waikiki Health actually next week. Uh, actually, this week. It's been five years. Oh, happy anniversary. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, I actually was working in a completely different field, and I was volunteering on a board with the Boys and Girls Club of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed um, the contribution I could make there and felt a real sense of fulfillment that I started asking myself, um, maybe I could move into nonprofit full time. So I started reaching out to some CEOs and some EDs that I knew in the community and asked if they'd give me some informational interviews. And um, I ended up connecting with the Chief of Marketing and Development at the time, back in 2013, of Waikiki Health. And we had just connected, and six months later, she reached out to me with a position that was available in marketing and development. And so I made the leap um, in 2013, and it's just been an extraordinary experience to work for this agency. Oh, I bet it has, and I know you, uh, you've got quite a visionary leader there and, and other staff members that you work with, so your position has grown and expanded over the years as well, or additional responsibilities coming in. Yeah, absolutely. Sheila Beckham, our CEO, um, she is a visionary and so innovative and such a strong leader, and she, I, I feel, offers um, all of us at the organization many opportunities for professional development. So I was with the marketing and development um, department for four years, mm -hmm. and um, that was overseen by Mary Beth Lohman, and uh, had a wonderful time growing through that department. Waikiki Health actually offered a program that was funded through the Hawaii Community Foundation a couple of years ago called Growing Leaders, and it was a six-month program for up-and-coming leadership. And so it's just evolved from there, and now I'm, um, yeah, doing emergency operations and community wellness. So you shifted out of the marketing and development part and into this n newer position? Yep. Okay, and yeah. was this a position created for you, uh, or is it, is it a new position? Um, it is a new position, yes it is. Um, the programs that I'm working with are not new programs. Um, Friendly Neighbors has been around since 89. Uh, tobacco Cessation, we've been doing that for many years as well. Um, emergency preparedness and emergency operations as a position, that has really evolved and it is a growing needed field in um, our country and definitely our state, specifically in healthcare. So um, there were new uh, mandates to comply with as of last year um, for healthcare facilities and emergency preparedness, so that garnered the new role. 
Yeah. And that's because you're a federally qualified healthcare facility, or is that, that's not exactly the right nomenclature, but... Uh. Yeah, yeah, uh, FQ, FQHC, so uh, Federally Qualified Health Center. And yes, that's one of the reasons why we have to comply with these new rules for emergency preparedness. It's actually all healthcare facilities in the nation that offer CMS, so that Center of Medicare and Medicaid Services. So Medicare and Medicaid has mandated that we uh, comply with new emergency preparedness rules. Which is um, almost every hospital or clinic in the nation. That's right, yeah. I mean, except a few, I, I can't even think of, I mean, maybe plastic surgery clinics or something, don't, don't do that, but private otherwise, clinics, maybe. So, you know, some private ones. So uh, actually, t tell us about that. What, what is, what does, what kind of emergency preparedness would, you, would, would are we talking about, like tsunamis or? Uh, well, yeah, of course, in, in our state, uh, tsunamis, hurricanes, um, Ballistic missile. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's unfortunate, yes. Low risk, yes. high vulnerability. Yes. Um, but essentially, for the emergency preparedness, it um, there's four core areas, and that is um, risk assessment, having policies and procedures in place, having communications plans in place, and having annuals, trainings, and testings. Mm -hmm. So all healthcare facilities um, are required to do an annual risk assessment for its top risks. So it varies from location from state to state. Yeah. But for here in Hawaii, absolutely tsunamis, um, hurricanes. Earthquakes. Earthquakes, absolutely. Um, so it would be how does the supply agents, shortages. Uh, and power shortages? Uh, supply shortages. Uh, supply shortages, right. Mm -hmm. So it might be something that there's an earthquake. How able is our healthcare center to respond? Or what would we do in that circumstance? Or, or both of those? Or? Both of those things, yeah. So for each of our risks, we have policies and procedures that we train our staff on, so how we would actually respond in the moment. Um, so for example, if there's an earthquake, the protocol is um, to drop, cover, hold on. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, get out of the way of windows or things that could fall down, drop, cover the back of your head or cover yourself under a solid piece of furniture and hold on. Um, and so we prepare our staff to be able to respond to protect our own safety, and then we have extended policies so we can respond to the community to help out. Well, I'm really glad that that the federal government is mandating this, and uh, CMS, probably yeah. some states have uh, uh, stricter uh, trainings. I, I imagine, like California's probably, uh, or maybe California set the standard. I don't know. Um, uh, right, right. Well, nationwide, we're definitely seeing it this year more than ever with the wildfires fire, in California, um, the hurricanes in Texas, Florida, Puerto Rico. We're seeing the the need for this standard. But it, it, it's, it is basic because you think about, you don't ever want a horrible something to happen, but in case it does, you absolutely want people to be trained, ready to go, and then be able to go. Yeah, prepared so, and ready to respond, yeah. And so you you work with other agencies or other hospitals as well on this, or? Absolutely, um, we have many community partners. We work with an organization called the HHEMC, that's the Hawaii Healthcare Emergency Management Coalition. Mm -hmm. So we're a coalition member. Most uh, healthcare facilities and hospital in the state, we're all members, so we meet monthly, and we do all sorts of trainings and testings together, and like I mentioned, we're community partners, so we have a real tight network coalition to um, work together. How in interesting. Yeah. And did you imagine that you'd be doing this when you were in college? No. <laughs> what did you major in? Communication. Communication. But you know yeah. what? That is so critical. That is just exactly what it is. It's just like having the plan of being able to... The, yeah. Right. So I, yeah. I always say, you know, liberal arts majors, it's... it's it, if I, I tell people get a liberal arts degree, learn how to communicate, learn how to write succinctly, learn how to, mm -hmm. you know, speak, learn how to be sympathetic and, and learn other w ways of communication, nonverbal and you know, uh, other languages and, and all kinds of things. So absolutely. So your yeah. your background maybe has prepared you for this in some way, but you can never imagine this like people telling us, uh, you know, you'd be doing this, that or the other and you think no way. But anyway, I yes. that's it sounds like really a, a fun and challenging work every day that you get to go to. It really is. It really is. I um, I feel super grateful that I uh, I have a job that I absolutely love, and I work with incredible people 
as well. And there are new fun challenges every day that um, keep me motivated and stimulated and challenged and always learning and growing. And are you down at the Waikiki facility? Um, well, uh, we, our main clinic is on Ohua Avenue, yeah. right in Waikiki. Yeah. I actually work in our administration offices, and that is at the corner of Macaulay and King, Mo'ili'ili. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. Uh, well, we, I, I, if it's okay with you, I'd like to go over just a, an overview of everything that Waikiki Health does because it, I don't think people realize how comprehensive your services are. And then if we could touch on some specific programs that you're, that you're specifically managing, which tobacco cessation and the friendly neighbors, and we won't have time to get through everything. So just a, a spoiler alert, um, and we'll have to have you back another time because this program has even evolved since the last time that I was here and a big shout out to Mary Beth for helping and everybody who helped her prepare if there was anybody else these wonderful um, uh, slides that we have up so yep. with that um, let's just go over the um, some of our, our slides that we've got so Waikiki Health really great graphics here medical and dental preventative care and social services so you are a federally qualified health center um, that provides access for medical and social services for everyone regardless of ability to pay. Yes. So is that part of the federally qualified health center designation? Or? Yes, absolutely. Um, we are, we're the folks that offer the folks without uh, health care or insurance, um, the medical care and the social services that they need. And so if I don't have insurance, can I just come to your, your clinic? Absolutely, yeah. And we actually have um, navigators to help you find the type of insurance um, that would be the right fit for you and also if need be to be on a sliding scale of any kind as well. So if I don't have insurance or maybe I don't even know if I qualify or whatever I can just say look I've, you know, I've been out of work for three months and I need my tooth pulled or my eyes been bugging me or whatever and I, I can't go to I can't afford to go to the doctor I can come to you all. Yep and we have like I said a specialist her name's Cheryl and she's wonderful and she'll sit down with you and help you find all the resources you need so you will get the care that 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 you need. So that's mm -hmm. really nice to hear. You have someone, you have a guide to help you navigate the system. Yeah. Which can be so, so hard to navigate the system. I think even with people that have every, you know, resource available to them of time and brains and patience to navigate a insurance. Absolutely, and it can be very daunting. You know, we have uh, one of the most comprehensive HIV programs um, in the state and Cheryl is just um, an amazing resource for these folks um, to get the services and the medications and the insurance that they need. So people might just show up at the at the Ohua clinic and say, uh, can you help me? Yep. And that's it. And, and we're here it. to help. Yep. Okay, so I see you've got some, what we offer here, you've got clinics in Waikiki, Macaulay, Mo Ili Ili, mm -hmm. and uh, the Diamond Head Clinic. What's the Diamond Head Clinic? Oh, um, is our, no, Diamond Head Neighborhoods. Okay, that's probably the uh, 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 Salvation Diamond, Army. Yeah, you're probably thinking of the PATH Clinic, which is the perinatal uh, addiction treatment home of Hawaii, located in Kaimuki, right close to Diamond Head. Okay, yep. so some of the other things that you do offer there, of uh, what we got, what we offer is the primary preventative care, so mm -hmm. basic care, mm -hmm. integrated behavioral health, so this is mental health care? Absolutely, yep. Okay, and we got dental care, which is amazing. Yep. Eyes, eyes and teeth and drugs, right? You got the pharmacy and it's a full service pharmacy? Two pharmacies actually in our Mo'ili Ili uh, clinic, the Makihiki Medical and Dental Clinic, which opened in 2014. We have a full pharmacy there and at our Ohua clinic. And can anybody go to this pharmacy and say, I got a prescription from a doctor um, and fill it there? I believe so. Um, basically, uh, yeah, I think anyone could come into our pharmacies. We, they're right in our clinics, so. It's designed the for the people that yeah, are, that are right in the clinic. Yeah, okay. yeah, but I mean, you can pop in there and get everything from like a, you know, if you need some Advil or like an antihistamine, absolutely, or a prescriptive medicine. So they, they sell Tylenol on the shelf? Uh, or the like the ibuprofen or. I see. You know, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, well, you have that there. Like you said, very comprehensive HIV AIDS services, mm -hmm. women's health, tobacco cessation, medical nutrition therapy, mm -hmm. chronic disease management, which is also really important, diabetes, diabetes. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm guessing mostly diabetes, um, yeah. 
Native Hawaiian healing, that's very interesting, and we'll talk about that when we get back. And care coordination, these are probably two really big things that yep. we don't realize how hard it is. It's, it's part of that navigating the system, and how do you even work through it when maybe you're not well and you don't have the support other other support that can help you navigate through that right and that includes then the medicaid and marketplace insurance enrollment so yeah um all of these things are offered it's a social medical um <laughs> solution for people right we offer so many wraparound services and like you mentioned the care coordination um, we do a lot of uh, kind of what's called a warm handoff so if one of our providers or our doctors um is seeing a patient where behavioral health is recommended They'll literally walk across the hall or bring in one of the psychologists and introduce them right then and there um, instead of like a referral that happens weeks later. That's great. Yeah, and that's just one example of the many wraparound services that we offer. Yeah. Well, we got a, a, a few more that uh, that we'll look at as far, as far as what you offer, and then we'll go into some specific programs. But for just a moment, we're going to take a, a break so they can do what we used to call in the olden days, station identification. But um, probably we'll just call it a short break. And I'm Winston Welch. This is Out and About on Think Tech live streaming network series. And we are talking with Liz um, Makara of Waikiki Health. And we'll be back in a minute. So stay tuned for more of the story. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. <music> Aloha, we're back and we're live. I am Winston Welch and this is Out and About on Think Tech Live Streaming Network Series. We were talking with Liz Makara, Director of Emergency Operations and Community Wellness at Waikiki Health about the programs and services it offers and some of the things that she's offering uh, in conjunction with this, which is uh, really neat. So we were just going over some of, the, some of the many things that you offer and you were talking about the wraparound service mm -hmm. and a warm handoff so that people could they, they might see someone and then be right introduced across the hall and said, this is the lady who's going to help you next or the gentleman who's going to help you next. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's so awesome because a lot of the times I think you, you're just, you know, if you're able to handle your own care, even then, it, you feel kind of, you know. So yeah. you got the, you also manage the Next Step Emergency Shelter mm -hmm. in Kaka'ako. Sure do. You have housing placement assistance. Yeah. Uh, and then homeless youth services. To, uh, Tell us a little bit about that. What is that? Uh, we have a program called Youth Outreach, and Waikiki Health actually partners with another nonprofit, Halekipa. And so we have uh, a great location in Waikiki, in the heart of Waikiki, where we run fondly known as YO, Youth Outreach. And our staff there, they work with um, homeless and runaway, quote unquote, at risk youth, where they actually do outreach to the homeless youth in Waikiki. And um, the house there, it's like a little cottage, and it really is a place of refuge for these kids where they can go and um, they can trust. They'll have like the positive guidance and resources that they need. They can come there for a hot meal, um, hot showers. They can do their laundry there. They um, can get their, uh, the equivalent of the GED. Mm. Um, they can get uh, uh, assistance with job place placement, sorry, um, and uh, learn interviewing skills, um, help with their education. Um, our tobacco cessation services are there. Uh, wonderful programs to um, 
uh, counteract against unwanted pregnancies and whatnot. So really great program. Yeah, really important to have that, especially for kids that are, that are beyond the, 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 the margin where they just absolutely need someone else stepping in. Because a lot of these kids, I was just in the paper the other day about kids on the street and a fifth of them are LGBTQ. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they've they've either been forced out of their house or had to leave for some reason. Um, and that's a lot. I mean, uh, just for that population alone, but there's, there's every there's every story that they hear there, uh, lots of um, difficulties. And it's so nice that, that this service exists. And those are probably some really special people that staff that you, is that what you call it? Yo. Yo, yo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that, and that's, I would love to talk about that at, at another time because uh, you also have a mail service for Mm -hmm. Your homeless Waikiki health patients. So you got, we unfortunately have a massive um, you know, homeless, uh, population. homeless population. Yeah, and that's a service that we've offered for many years. Um, you know, a, a barrier to um, more livelihood and services yeah. uh, is definitely having a mailing address. So yes. we provide them a mailing address so they can come and pick up their mail at our clinic. That's really great yeah. to, to hear that. And you have some job training skills too as well for all kinds of folks, the outreach medical services of the caravan. So that is something that goes out into the the community mm -hmm. yep. at regular stops and regular places? Yep, so it's called the MMU, uh, that's what we call it, MMU. It's a mobile medical unit. Mm -hmm. um, it's parked actually at our Next Step shelter, but it goes all over the island and now it's going to uh, the, it's being used in the Pu'o Hunua uh, program, um, visiting the prisons as well. So uh, that's a wonderful service that we offer. Like it's a one-stop shop, whole, medical exam room on wheels. So it, the Pu'u Honua program, that's a new one, so tell us about that. Um, really, Auntie Fran, our director of Native Hawaiian Healing, she is the expert and she is the leader of this program, so she can speak about it in a much more robust way, mm -hmm. but um, they're going out to the local prisons and they're working with the folks there who are about to come out, making sure that they have the resources they need uh, for medical care, services, shelter, um, so they don't end up going back. Yes, so it's, yeah. it's absolutely critical that we bring people back into society in a manner that allows them to thrive. Absolutely. And obviously they've had troubles, which is why they got in the system in the first place. And if we don't provide needed support and we just say, here, you're back, it, we're just setting them up for failure. Absolutely. So that's that's why this this program is so extraordinary, and it's wonderful that we're offering it, and it's awesome that Auntie Fran is is able to. I would love to hear more it. about that too. Yeah. Another day. This is this is new since the last time, or perhaps I just didn't get to it with with Phyllis because there's so many different things to talk yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Tell me about the the senior assistance program, which is your friendly neighbors program, because this okay. is something that must be very uh, your this is your um, your own uh, kuleana, I guess. So yeah. how did it start? What's its history and and how many people does it serve? And tell me all about this program. Sure. So uh, friendly neighbors started um, back in uh, the 80s in 1989. Um, and so we actually received funding through the EAD, um, or the program goes through the Elderly Affairs Division. Funding comes through the state and then through the city and county. Okay. And so we offer two kinds of services. Um, we offer attendant care services and um, homemaker services. So we work with volunteers in the community to work with seniors in their home. So we match up seniors with volunteers and attendant care is basically providing companionship, friendship, helping them out around the house, going for a walk, maybe do a little grocery shopping for them playing cards, homemaker services. That um, We have a full-time staff who's incredible with the seniors who offers light housekeeping, cleaning, dusting, mopping. And we also um, match uh, volunteers with the seniors to offer them that, that housekeeping service. And this is at no charge to the seniors. And it's incredibly important because uh, many of these seniors are uh, low income and they don't have family of their own or support, and um, we're helping them age in place. So we are allowing them to stay in their home and bring the services to them. Would this be something where maybe we, we have a neighbor or a friend who's 
they're doing okay, just kind of okay, but they, they could use a little bit more support. Um, maybe it's someone to, to drive them to the market or, um, or, or meet them at the market and help them go shopping or, 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 or take them to Long's or, or your pharmacy and, and get their medical checkup and their, and their, their medications. Absolutely, that's definitely part of it. Um, some of our volunteers do do that. We'll um, run errands for them or, or with them and um, provide them the friendship and companionship that they need as well. Yep. How, so obviously you're, you have a system where you're intaking volunteers as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Does, do we go online and make an application or? Yeah, so we do all sorts of things to recruit volunteers in the community. We have partnerships with like KCC, UA, Chaminade. Um, so we do like local school fairs and whatnot where we represent friendly neighbors, Waikiki Health friendly neighbors. And um, we encourage students to sign up. Many students have to, um, do volunteer hours for their practicum, so it's a good fit. And of oh. course, we want to encourage them even after um, any practicum must be done to hopefully continue their relationship and friendship with the senior, and many of them do as well. And then we also um, work with online programs like uh, Volunteer Match, um, even Craigslist, uh, organization called RSVP, um, to recruit volunteers. And are you in need of more volunteers at this time? We're always in need of volunteers, yes, yeah, because we receive um, referrals from the EAD, the Elderly Affairs Division, uh, for the seniors who need, need our services. And so we check in with them on a daily basis and then recruit the volunteers, meet the volunteers. They fill out um, a volunteer application. They go through a background check. Mm -hmm. um, and then our Elder Services Coordinator um, We'll get to know them a little bit and get to know each of the seniors individually and match them because we want to have like a sustainable friendship and partnership there. So it might be someone says, I have five hours a week to give and I need five hours a week. Or you might have someone that needs 10 hours a week, but two people doing five hours a week each yeah. on a shift. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then at, at one other program, which I, I, that, that's a wonderful program, by the way. And it really is. just so important because it's connection, it's community, it's it's bringing people together in a very powerful and um, important way. So, yeah, I, I can just, that must be very gratifying, you know. Absolutely. You know, we have so much, or I have so much respect um, for our Kapuna. And um, I feel like this program helps um, them maintain a sense of dignity, too, as they age. Like I mentioned, it's them aging in place. We're bringing services to them. We have many other community partners um, that we work with through the EAD, like, for example, Meals on Wheels or Project Donna or several other services. St. Francis provides them the services they need. Um, so it's very special, yeah. And that's something where if they called in and they say, I'm a senior, I could really use some help, you might be calling in Meals on Wheels or coordinating some care with some other agencies as well. Well, it's actually the EAD, Elderly Affairs Division, that would um, do the assessment to the seniors and uh, organize those extensive um, other programs. But okay. our volunteers, they let us know, because sometimes you know a volunteer right. is in the home Sees a few hours a week. Exactly. Okay. So it's, it's a really important service. Yeah. Well, it's, it sounds like just a, a wonderful program. So if we wanted more information about this, we can go to well, you, WaikikiHealth.org? Yep, sure can. Or you can call our Friendly Na Neighbors program at 926-8032 um, as well. Okay, and I see that yeah. you have the senior care, the senior assistance handbook. Uh, yeah. This is made by elderly, the Elderly Affairs Division of the City and County of Honolulu. Yep, so we empower all of our volunteers with this resource as well, and our seniors. We give this to all of them too. It's a wonderful resource, you know, if <clears throat> the senior is, <clears throat> excuse me, um, having some issues with taxes or, or need to discern what their next step is, all of that information is, is here from That should be taxes sent out to, to every legal. single household in the state, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> really, yeah. 
You know, we did not have time to even get to your so smoking cessation program, which I know is also near and dear to your heart yeah, because you're cool. out of town. So you have to come back another time. Will you promise and talk about this? I would because love to, very important for us to all to stop smoking, and uh, we get benefits immediately out of that. But the whole community does. The whole community, but unfortunately, I cannot believe it. That's why I told you this is just going to race by. So you will come back again, and we can talk about that and other programs. That. Yeah, uh, that would be wonderful, and I really appreciate you being here today. Thank so. you so much, Winston, for having me. Oh, it's, really it's my pleasure. It. And, and again, we're, we're we're out of time, and we have to wrap it up. Unfortunately, I'm Winston Welch on Out and About Think Tech Live Streaming Network Series. And we have had a delightful time talking with Liz McCara, of the Director of Emergency Operations and Community Wellness, which we have a lot more to talk about at Waikiki Health. And we certainly appreciate learning a lot more about this wonderful organization. For more on today's topic, more info, go to waikikihealth.org. So many wonderful programs there. Thank you for tuning in. We welcome your feedback. And we want to thank our broadcast engineer, Ian Davidson, our technical producer, Ray Sangalang our floor manager, Robert McLean, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all together. And we learn a lot here on Think Tech for all these great programs. So I will see you here every other Monday at 3 p.m. I will see Liz here in the future for more on Out and About on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, everyone.